So a little while ago, an Oscar-nominated documentary producer friend of mine sent me a link to an article from IndieWire that basically laid out all the reasons why the golden age of big budget docs is dying at the moment. I'll link to it in the description and it's worth reading, but the short version is that across the industry, pretty much all the big players like Netflix, HBO, Showtime, and all the rest are slashing their doc divisions. CNN even canceled all its original documentary content and a bunch of my colleagues had their shows axed overnight. Now saying that the whole documentary industry is dying is obviously a little bit dramatic and it would be super easy to fall into a deep pit of despair especially for someone like me who spent close to a decade shooting high-end projects for these people <laughs> with that said i'd be lying if i said i hadn't personally felt a pretty strong drop off in job offers from that part of the market but at the same time i've never been doing better as a documentary filmmaker and so don't think i'm saying that this is all hopeless quite the opposite in fact so in this video i'm going to break down what's actually happening in the documentary market what it means for us as filmmakers and what I'm personally gonna do to thrive even as the world changes around us. Hey guys, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth. And on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years working as a documentary filmmaker and photographer. So for a while there, like between 2017 and say 2021, there was so much money being dumped into the mainstream documentary industry that it seemed like the taps would never run dry. Everyone from Netflix to National Geographic to HBO was greenlighting doc series after doc series, spending so much on production that I was shooting over 200 days a year for people like that. But COVID and the changing finances of the streaming world slowed all that way, way down. And I've personally noticed that even though I'm actually having one of my best years ever as a filmmaker, less and less of those days are coming from big budget industry productions. And finally, someone summed up this slump that we've all been feeling in that IndieWire article I mentioned. Give it a read on your own when you have time. I'm not gonna bore you by reading the entire thing here, but the writer basically says that for the big players in the space, the money has just dried up. Let me read a short quote here. With the documentary boom came booming budgets. Films that were being produced for less than 1 million were creeping up to budgets of 2 million or more, and much of that money went to a burgeoning documentary production infrastructure. One filmmaker said that archival costs have skyrocketed in recent years as libraries recognize their value, and any movie centered around music is destined for enormous licensing costs. More documentaries in the pipeline meant increased demands for top editing talent who became increasingly expensive. Also increasing were audience expectations for what a quality documentary should look like, which meant pricier graphics and effects. So basically all that's saying that there was so much being made that the costs just got crazy and then the profits started going down. And they've responded by pausing spending on big ticket docs until they can figure things out. Where there is still more buying than ever is in projects that have big name IP attached to it. Like they're about famous people or well-known incidents, but most of us aren't working on the next Pamela Anderson documentary and we wanna spend our time exploring lesser known stories in the world. It's sort of like how Marvel has come to dominate Hollywood and it's hit and miss whether or not anything else can break through in theaters. Now, I personally don't really want to work on true crime or reality TV, which is huge at the moment. So where does that leave us? Well, even though it might not sound like it, I'm extremely optimistic. Like I said, I'm having a great year and I'm doing it without being attached to dozens and dozens of high profile industry shoots. Now I'm still doing those shoots when they come up, but I've realized that the positive side effects of the whole doc boom is that even if the money has slowed down at the top level of the industry, it left the world with a huge appetite for documentary content. It's not that there's no work out there because believe me, there is. And it's not like film festivals aren't accepting films because there are more film festivals accepting more nonfiction work than ever before. It's just that we need to rethink what success means. I've been very guilty of letting my ego define my success in my career. And as embarrassing as it is for me to admit, I often validated myself in the past only by working for the biggest name clients out there. I won't pretend that it doesn't feel good to get a credit on a Showtime or National Geographic shoot, but we, and by we I mean myself too, need to stop thinking that success as a documentary filmmaker means we need the big credits to have a fulfilling career. Let me go back to the article again for a second. Documentaries are supposed to be about telling a story that wouldn't otherwise be told or bringing light to a story or an issue and characters that likely wouldn't otherwise be told. That doesn't mean the we work docs shouldn't exist. And here she's referencing a high profile documentary about the rise and fall of we work and how it's based on a story with a lot of publicity already. Then she says, it's just there's also gotta be room for those emerging filmmakers and those stories that are giving you a snapshot into a world that you wouldn't otherwise get a snapshot into. Something that's not already been in the headlines. I think that's where the divide seems to be. It just seems like commercial success equals something that we as a society 
society already know about. And that's something I couldn't agree with more. I don't think most of us got into documentary filmmaking to tell only stories that the world already knows about, though those can be cool for sure. We want to tell stories about the little people, those who don't have a big voice but whose stories still need to be told. At least that's true for me anyways. So what do we do? Well, we do it ourselves. We accept that in the short term we're probably not going to sell our short to HBO and we make it anyways because we believe in it. That's how the documentary industry worked before the gold rush and so really it's just a return to the way things always were. Except for the fact that the demand is so much higher now and there have never been more opportunities to make money with the camera even if it isn't for Amazon or CNN. What I'm finding personally is that based on my doc experience I'm getting so many more requests than ever to do non-fiction shoots and branded content and that's translating into cash which then buys me the freedom to make more of my own stuff which then translates into even more jobs as I release more content. As I put more and more of myself out there through this YouTube channel especially people are coming to me to tell their stories much more than I ever experienced before and I'm not saying that we all need to become YouTubers either what I'm saying is that if you make good stuff and put it into the world people will find it and ask you to do the same for them. This can be branded content for companies or nonprofits looking to get their stories out or even the successful individuals. I recently got approached by a television personality who works in the sports world, which I can't really get into specific details about right now, but he wants to finance a doc based on his special access to the sport and the whole behind the scenes world of it. It's really interesting because that guy has never had contact with the big name production companies that I built my early career around and he only found me because I'm sharing my work and my perspective publicly and he wants me to bring the same approach to his story. First we're going to shoot a trailer and then possibly a full feature and all of that will be paid work. That's just one example but this is something that's becoming the new normal for me and when I really look at the books it's actually going to work out for me better financially to work this way and give me more time to develop personal projects and these YouTube videos because I'm not on the road all the time anymore. And that will then lead to more people finding me which is going to lead to more work and so on. For a while the drop off in big name jobs bum me out because I thought I was supposed to or maybe entitled to would be a better choice of words only work for the most high profile stuff and only do projects of a certain caliber but the reality is that all through history artists have always needed day jobs and it's silly to think that it should be any different now. I've mentioned Leonardo da Vinci a lot lately but if that guy had to paint portraits of rich people so he could find the freedom to design the bicycle on the side, then why should I be any different? There is so much work out there these days, and even if those jobs don't stoke my ego in the same way that a never-ending stream of National Geographic assignments did, it's accomplishing the same thing as Da Vinci's portraits and getting me the freedom to do what I really want to be doing. And that's telling stories that I believe in, not just what the market decides is valuable. And the article addresses this as well, and I'll just quote from it one last time here. I say this to filmmakers all the time. What's your plan? What do you want to have happen? Because here's the landscape. I can't go yell at HBO or Netflix and tell them to buy documentary films. That's not possible. So what's another way that we can get your film seen? More than likely in a year or two the market will stabilize, the big names will realize they're out of content and everyone will start buying again and another golden age will kick off. So what this means is that when this does happen the people who've been making stuff and putting it out into the world whether that's on YouTube or film festivals or where Forever, those are going to be the people that they come to when the money starts flowing again. Your goal as a filmmaker shouldn't be to work for a specific network, even if that feels good on the ego. It has to be to make films and get them seen, because the people who do that will come out on top in the end. And trust me, for those people who have a reputation of being good storytellers, there is tons of money out there these days. But that money isn't going to come to the people who are only focused on selling to Netflix at the moment. It's going to come to the ones who are out there doing the thing. So there we are, my take on what to do in a changing market and how even if the golden age is going through a rough patch there are still more opportunities than ever before if you put yourself in a position to take advantage of them. So make stuff, put it into the world, find a day job like Da Vinci did and eventually the boom will come back and you'll be ready to jump at it. What do you guys think? How are you planning out your long-term career and how do you feel about the big guys slowing down on their spending? Let me know in the comments. See ya!